quite time to leave, didn't she? Hello there, how are you? And welcome along to 90 Min Talks on the 90 Min YouTube channel. If you haven't already, what are you doing? Give us a like, give us a subscribe, get in the comments because we have a brilliant show for you this morning. Pleased to say former Spurs captain Jenna Scalacci is with us in the guest chair today. We've got Nancy from, um, of course, Indivisia and everything else that you do. And Rachel from Girls on the Ball without her other half, Sophie, which feels a little bit weird. Yeah, I'm going to just... <laughs> What have you done with her? Got rid of her in the Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, who pulled the short straw? I'll let you decide. She's over in Champions League doing Bayern and Leon. So, and I'm here doing this great show with you guys. That's how'd you work that one out? Like, you, yeah, do you draw straws? I'm a good wife. I know how much she wanted to go to the Allianz Arena. So, it looked good. Yeah, I mean, it looked good. Uh, last night, interesting result for Arsenal coming for you um we'll get into that a little bit later on um but let's focus on what's ahead as well because it's women's football weekend this weekend which is the best weekend of our year isn't yeah, it it's, it's like our christmas, christmas yeah. <laughs> it is it's better and of course it's uh, all over women's football across the wsl the championship and the fa national league and beyond uh, and just now we would like to ask you to get behind the team that you're supporting this weekend Get out there, get a jacket on, take your umbrella, go along and have fun and support the women in the game. That's right, isn't it? And, then, and then keep coming. Yeah. Yeah. Again yeah. and again and again. Women's football weekend every weekend and every Wednesday. Um, <laughs> Jenna, this is your first time yes. um, with us in the programme. How are you? How's life at Spurs? Because you're still there doing yeah. quite a bit with the squad as well. And we see you all the time on the telly as well. How are you? Yeah, good. Busy, busy. I thought when I uh, retired, I'd have lots of free time but now I seem to just be busier than ever but no it's good obviously still involved at Tottenham which has been a bit up and down in the last couple of weeks um but yeah no busy busy as ever I'm enjoying the media work and and it's nice to still be in, involved in that environment I think I'd have struggled if I'd stepped away from the game completely so mm. I tried to step away for a month and then I got bored <laughs> <laughs> like you say you said an interesting time um, yeah. at Tottenham at the minute um how's the squad been reacting to the departure of Rianne Skinner well I think obviously they didn't really have too much time to think about it given the timing of Rianne's departure um they had probably the biggest match of the of their season against Leicester on the Wednesday and you know that they needed to have a reaction and we saw exactly that it wasn't the prettiest of games um but they had to get the three points I think because they was in real real trouble then um it looked the table looks a bit nicer now looking at it I was getting anxiety <laughs> looking at it before before that evening um but there's still you know some big matches coming up they still got to play a lot of teams in and around them uh, in that relegation zone but big weekend for them coming up now mm. um Vicky's still in charge there and um, I think the confidence that they would have got and what it what their three points would do mentally after not picking up any points six of October will be massive for them so I'd imagine especially going into an Arsenal game yeah like it takes the pressure off a little bit right because I think had Leicester won that they would have leapfrogged you and that would have just been yeah not great. so I at mean, least you can be you know, a little bit of weight off going into the Arsenal game, surely. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't even e explain how much pressure was on those mm -hmm. players before when, before Wednesday evening. And I think you could see it in the opening 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Actually, up until Beth scored her goal, I, I, you what could a see it. Was my I know, what an absolute <laughs> banger. <laughs> <What? again. laughs> Honestly, turning up again. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. I had, I had the perfect angle as well. I thought it took a deflection. No, 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 nah, no, 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 it wasn't. <laughs> sorry, Beth. Sorry. Pure, pure, <laughs> pure talent, that. No, pure, it was unreal. pure class. But um, yeah, I think as soon as that goal went in, you could see like a weight had lifted and they've been prone to conceding straight away yeah. and giving away sloppy goals. But something, you know, every single player then stepped up. They had mm. a bit of confidence about them. And then they started to play, which we haven't seen for a while. And I think that is due to the pressure that they've had on yeah. their shoulders. So I think that, that them three points is massive. And I 
think we won't know just how important that goal mm. was until the end of the season now. The fight was less scrappy at yes. the goal. So beforehand yeah. it was so scrappy. Both teams were like, obviously a very mm. important game for both yeah. teams and Leicester probably smelled blood and thought this would be somewhere we can get points. <laughs> yeah. But then once the goal went in, it was just much more composed fight rather yeah. than that scrappy, I think you'd seen in the first half. Yeah, yeah. and I, I don't think they sat back either. I think Tottenham could have had a, a couple more goals after that. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think a massive, massive result for the club. Asking for a friend. Do we know about new manager coming in or when that might happen? No, um, as it is, Vicky Jepsen's still in show. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, well, I, I just wanted to be like, what mate? <laughs> what friend? What oh, her name's <laughs> Siobhan or yeah, her name. Siobhan. Siobhan No, no news yet. Okay. Okay. Sorry. You're annoying. I do think they should probably just hang on to her, I think, for the rest of the season for consistency and continuity, mm. I think, just to... New manager bounce as well. Like, it's such a... Typical thing. And yeah. not a Brighton, you know. I mean, I know Amy Merrick wasn't a new manager, but there was a serious bounce mm -hmm. when she was put back in charge. That's what so. you were saying as well. You'd quite like Amy Merrick to remain in that role as I well. Because it's the, you know, the relationship that the players have and that stability you know, that we always mention. like about. sort of like, not safety, but like safety of that they know the person and they don't have to bring someone else in and build a whole new relationship. Mm. I, even if it's that's an experienced manager or a manager that they've worked with previously, to bring it into a whole new group, mm. it does take time to, to build that relationship up to a certain standard, whereas Vicky's there, everyone knows her, they think she's great, she's been in for however long now, and it just, a little bit less pressure to them, mm. like, oh, someone else has come in, let's get to know their style, what they want to do. In the last, like, seven yeah. games of the season. In, the, in yeah. very important games of the season for Spurs. Like, at least Amy and um, Vicky, like, they both know what's gone on as well, yeah. so they can relate to that. Yeah, with the players, mm. so I think that would help for the rest of the season. We will wait and see what happens, uh, of course, when we know you'll be the first to know. Uh, get in the comments, by the way, if you've got any questions you would like to ask, and if you're looking forward to Women's Football Weekend this weekend, you can let us know what games you're going to as well. Um, let's reflect on the FA Cup as well. Um, I had a little chat with you the other day, didn't I? Um, just reacting off the back of the FA Cup, and Rachel Daly, she does it again. <laughs> Aston Villa, knockout Manchester City. So many elements that we can focus on here. A, Man City seem to see Villa as this bogey team. They just can't seem to get the better of them at all this season. Yeah. It's nice to see, though. I like that. It becomes like less predictable, and that's mm. exactly what we want in the FA Cup, the Conti Cup, the, the WSL. Well, women's football in, in general, that's what we want. It not go into a game and be like, oh, this team's going to win. Aston Villa are like, no, no, we're, we're scrapping that. We're, yeah, we're they're upsetting a lot of yeah. teams, aren't they? It's good Villa? to see. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of upset. I've labelled them the disruptors. I think they're <laughs> the ones that are going to start disrupting that top four. Yeah. Um, as, and like more teams will start doing that. Well, look at the confidence that's going to give them, knocking out Man City, taking four points from them this in the league so mm. far. Th they're not going to have that same fear now going into, is it Man United they're playing? Or Chelsea. Chelsea. I can't remember. Chelsea. I, I, I said what fixtures I oh, wanted. Yeah, yeah. And then Chelsea the fixtures the came out and they were different. <laughs> and now I can't remember which Yeah, Villa at home to Chelsea. Yeah, so like, you know, they've had good games against Chelsea. I remember that game last season. It was the one where Sam Kerr whipped off her shirt. That's remember? it. It was uh, in the dying yeah. minute, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, she scored in like the 91st minute. So Villa know what they can do against big teams. So that kind of thing is going to give them huge confidence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the fact that Rachel Daly does her job every single time. It's like with England, as we mentioned there. You've also got to look at Bunny Shaw. And then also the fact that I, I wouldn't be surprised if these players get big moves and bought out of their contract. Stop that. You, you tried this <laughs> and we spoke. <laughs> and it worked. It. And it worked. Remember the whole Lesser Russo thing? What happened in the summer? You know, yeah, Christmas, Nothing January. happened, though. So. I know, but it was all out there. Anyway. But it was all exciting. <laughs> it was out there because yeah, of you, yeah. Shabbat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? No, <laughs> I will say, though, like, we talk about Rachel Daly, but for me, like, I, I say this week in, week out, like, someone like Akenza Darley, for me, at Aston Villa, she she's the glue. Like, I think she does so much work. A Kirsty Hansen at Villa. Like, obviously, you've got Mads, you've got Rachel Corsi, you've got so many players that are, like, really stepping up to the plate. Like, mm -hmm. in my opinion, at Villa. Mm. So, don't get me wrong, you have your Rachel who's scoring, but you've got, again, Kenza, who's, for me, she's the glue. I call her the glue. She's mm. really helping to make the team's mechanisms, like, come together. And it's so good to see because it's exciting. It's exciting yeah. to have a Villa squad that's, that's stepping up, that's becoming, like, they're disrupting, they're, they're not going against the grain. And, yeah, it's an exciting time. And I think we focus on one player. But for me, Villa, as a collective, are just doing something really special obviously mm. Carla is doing a great job there so it's exciting even their social media team stepping up like everything's just yeah. going to level up for <laughs> everyone why would she leave though like not only are they challenging but 
she's got these really great partnerships like the Daily Dally duo is is mm. you know taking the WSL by yeah. storm this season she's got really good relationships with players there and they've got good quality in that squad so mm. I, I mean I don't know I'd, I'd stay if I was her yeah I think they got the recruitment bang on yeah. didn't they in the summer and then mm. I did do it in January and I think I spoke to Carla on Monday evening on a podcast mm. and we were talking about how important that 4-3 win in opening game of the season was for them mentally now like you know, yeah. mm-hmm. they were never meant to beat Man City. And they came in back. In that manner. Yeah, yeah in that yeah. manner. And I think the confidence and the belief that that gave them really kick-started mm. and they've not looked back since then. Yeah, no, it's been very, very good to see. I was really hoping for a little Villa trip to Wembley, but they do have Chelsea now in the semi-finals. Brighton face Manchester United as well. How do we see that going? Magic of the FA Cup. No, I mean, anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's I what I love Villa about the FA Cup. A, mm. I mean, if anything can cause an upset, they'll have to get past the... The holders, don't they? Yeah. Like, it's going to be a big, big ass. Chelsea aren't infallible. I think they're conceding goals in games we don't expect them to concede goals You're in. right about that. Mm-hmm. So I think there are areas that um, Villa can exploit. You know, it's the same with Man City. Obviously, Man City have been on a great run of form, but when you look beyond the score lines, that Brighton game, you know, that was very, very close. And I think Brighton deserved at least a point from that match. So there's there are areas that can be exploited, and it's just a case of whether... Villa can do that you know they're good on the counter attack so are Chelsea mm. so like Villa's defence are going to have to be so switched yeah. on against Sam Kerr and Lauren James um, defensively Villa were great yeah so weekend, uh, you know there the gaps that LJ and Sam find to yeah. link up to yeah I was speaking to Mark Skinner about this and he's like you can train for it but without Sam Kerr it's really hard to train against that and the, <laughs> the thing is you train for a situation and Sam Kerr will be like okay I can see Too you're preparing soon. for this so I'm going to do that yeah. and it's it's hard to train against. But equally, we've seen that Villa can score. And I think when they play, Villa will score. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But who will win is tough. Mm. Mm. Manchester United edging towards a trophy. Um, they have been outstanding this season. They've not been able to get the better of Chelsea. Uh, Brighton, you've got to give them huge credit as mm. well to find themselves at this stage of the competition, considering they've had a tricky season. Um, wh- what do you think will happen in that semi-final, Jenna? For me, I think... I can only see Manchester United now kicking on and, and making their first final, which will be absolutely massive for them. Um, I think just looking at the two teams on paper, the quality that Manchester United have. Obviously, Brighton have got a, a side project of survival on their hands. Um, but no, done amazingly well to, to get to this stage in, in the FA Cup, given the circumstances that are under. But for me, I can I just think Man United have too much quality. Mm-hmm. For so any other result, a little trip to Wembley then, <laughs> Manchester United. I think there's a lot card. of pressure, not like externally. I think there's a lot of pressure for United to do well as well. Like I think it's there's more of an expectation of them to be in the final. I'd, yeah. I'd say like mm-hmm. just uh, maybe like their fan base obviously want to see it, but I would think the wider women's football uh, sphere would be like, okay, United, you need to you need to get into a final like you need to show us what you got I think the win though against Lewis and I know they were playing a championship team but Lewis put up some fight yeah. Man United looked like they still had that hangover from the loss to Chelsea mm. so I think actually getting that win will just be a bit of a weight off as well like knowing that they've progressed now they're into the semi-final mm. um, so hopefully we'll see them kind of turn that form back on again because I think since the Chelsea loss they've just been a little bit deflated mm. I think as well what's what's quite exciting is to know which teams are going to be there you know it's different it's a little bit different yeah. I'm so usual. hoping for a Villa Brighton semi-final because oh, then at least one of them yeah, would have been yeah. in the final I know but damn you a special day <laughs> out, uh, yeah. for sure but um, like you say the magic of the, the FA Cup um, it's going to be a very exciting final whatever happens and we'll wait and see how those semis go uh, but I cannot wait for that I think if, if like if you get a trip, if Villa get a trip, I mean, we've seen that purely from a biased perspective, but if <laughs> yeah. Villa get a trip to Wembley, I'm like, oh, wow, well, what, what a special day out. My mum and dad will be down for that one, <laughs> um, for Russia to get injured. Um, <laughs> okay, let's focus on the Champions League quarterfinals as well. Um, Sophie, as we mentioned, isn't here. Yeah. Arsenal last night, away at the Allianz, uh, Bayern Munich won 1-0. Yeah. What did we make of that performance? It was frustrating because I thought Arsenal deserved to win it. Um, they, you know, they go through these phases where we're so used to being like, oh my God, in front of goal, Arsenal, like mm. you don't put your chances away. And then you get the Conti Cup final and you think, okay, it's clicked now. And then you swing back to that same um, Arsenal again where they're just not putting chances away. I do think they're unlucky with some of the decisions. Mm. Really weird that goal line technology wasn't in, but VAR was. Like, I mm. didn't really understand that. That was weird. Um, but equally, I think they can go back to the Emirates and know they could win. Mm. Um, 
I think it was just a bit of a frustrating game because some of the mistakes that were happening, some of the the opportunities Bayern were getting were from Arsenal mistakes. Yeah. Like they put together really nice <coughs> passages of play and then just pass the ball to Bayern. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a bit frustrating. Yeah. yeah. I feel like when I, so I was travelling back so I missed the first half of the game, which was very annoying because I was on the tube. But as soon as I got in, obviously whacked the game on. Um, I was watching it and I felt like as you say, Arsenal were pushing for something. I even tweeted, I was like, I can feel it, like something's coming, something's <laughs> coming here. Like, it did feel like something was coming for Arsenal. It didn't. Keelan and had a goner. Just didn't yeah, she was, had it, a great yeah. performance, but like, I was like, something's coming here, something's coming here. Luckily, I didn't put a time limit on it because people were like, Nancy, we're waiting on you. And I was like, well, this is moving over to next week. I meant a second leg. <laughs> yeah, but I did genuinely feel like something was coming for Arsenal. So I am actually really excited for the second mm. leg because I do think... They know that they can put the performance in. Yeah. Hopefully, they get some goals. It'd be good for them to get some goals at, at the Emirates. Um, but yeah, I just felt like something was coming. It, it didn't, but thankfully there was no time limit in it. Mm. And I didn't say at the end of 90 minutes. Another 90 nice <laughs> minutes to come. Like, I don't think it's the worst result for them. I think Jonas was quite Emirates, happy, wasn't yeah. he? Well, they played well. It, they like, played very I mean, well. They're hit just... the post, having like, you know... Two goals cleared off the line. Was one of them in? We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Use goal line technology. Um, yeah. Potential penalty shouts. You mm-hmm. know, it's there. Yeah. But yeah, it's just putting it in the back of the bloody mm-hmm. net is uh, mm-hmm. the issue. Yeah. Coming back to the Emirates, looks likely, mm-hmm. doesn't it? It's going to be yeah. the Emirates. It has to be. Um, yes. Um, right. Okay. Fine. Yes. Good point. Um, will be the, the opportunity for them to just continue to progress mm-hmm. in this competition because Arsenal need it to enhance their season once more don't they just to keep kicking on considering where they are in the league table is that fair yeah I, I'd, I'd, I'd agree and I think you know I'm sure they'll get a massive massive crowd there I think last night wasn't to be for them sometimes you just have have those kind it felt of like matches if they played another 15 minutes yeah, they still would have been yeah. hitting around the goal yeah, yeah. 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 and another night they could have won quite comfortably but um, no I think on home home, home turf um I think Bayern, Bayern Munich defensively in the Bundesliga have been quite vulnerable and leaked more goals than normal. So just got to get that quality and that, that final mm-hmm. clini- clinicalness in the in the final third. Would you like to see any changes made to the Arsenal sides? I don't know there? because I think when we looked at how they played against Chelsea in the FA Cup, they had the right game plan but they didn't execute it well they executed it well in the Conti Cup final. Mm. And I feel like they have the right game plan against Bayern. They yeah. just weren't executing it in front of goal. So oh, part yeah. of me thinks... Maybe they get a second chance. Well, second well second listen, chance. Second, second wind. Second you know, if they do whatever they did in between the FA Cup and the Conti Cup final, <laughs> then maybe they do that this week and they execute the game plan because I feel like they had exploited Bayern. They just, just couldn't score. Yeah. 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 So yeah. for me, I feel like maybe leave it as is. Okay. Um, also, can we just touch on the, the, the fairy tale story of obviously the Champions League this time round with Roma? Um, getting out of the group stage as well. Yeah. Played Barcelona last night, just 1 0. That's Barcelona. I mean, one what an offensive yeah. performance they put yeah. on. Literally, bodies on the line. Yeah. They, they had to soak up some real pressure. They, but they had chances just too. Yeah, yeah, they did. They, they had did. something like 11 chances and four on target, yeah. Yeah. which is pr- pretty good against Barca. I think Barca had like 33 chances, but only wow. 10 on target. Mm. So actually, you know, their ratio is better. Their shots on target to <laughs> shots is better. So give them that. But it it yeah. keeps it really interesting, though. It does. You know, very, very interesting. Um, next time for them, though, they're going to head to the Camp Nou. And what another yeah. experience then that will be. Mm-hmm. But know, at least they're even. heading there 1-0 down yeah, and not 100%. like 4-0 down or something. Do you know what I mean? They've got the hope and the spirit yeah. like, in them. They put a performance in last night. Mm. As you say, they're only going in 1-0 down. Like, you, you never know. Like, I was going into that match thinking... Could this be? I think most people were like, could this be quite a yeah, yeah. aroma? But it Hard wasn't so. Yeah, still, so we're going yeah. into the next week, and it's like they've done that. Yeah. What, what what they bring into the table next week? What's quite funny as well is that Vicky Losada, who obviously won the Champions League yes. captain mm. for Barca, I don't think she's ever played nope, at the Champions. No, she hasn't, and now she is at Roma. She goes with Roma. Oh wow! So there's nice. there's so many elements of that story that will be like playing against great. your former team. Is finally so making cool. captain. <laughs> <laughs> And the place I'll be jumping, that's for <laughs> sure. Um, okay, uh, Sophie, uh, Leon against PSG tonight. Sophie's there. That's yes. What, um, what do we expect of this one? Is she feeding any, any, any information? Do we know anything about teams? <laughs> <laughs> no, not not yet. I think she's madly getting a train from Munich to Leon. Oh. Yeah, flight was cancelled. Oh. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, it's. I think it's hard to call because Chelsea have been 
not at their best this season, but still winning. Mm. Um, so it's like they haven't quite hit their rhythm. But then obviously played really well against PSG just before Christmas at Stamford Bridge. And then you look at Leon, who obviously got battered 5-0 by Arsenal right at the beginning of the Champions League, but had a lot of injuries back then. So they're also quite hard to call. Mm-hmm. Um, I would expect LJ and Sam Kerr to do a bit of damage. So mm-hmm. we're calling Lord and James LG now. Is that what the kids yeah. are doing? Yeah, the kids are doing. Okay. Get on board. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I'd maybe Chelsea edge it. But I think it might be a close game. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be a really close game. Like, they're, Leon are champions. They, they're not going to want to give up any losses, especially in something that is kind of their own, isn't it? So yeah. And I did hear Ada Hegerberg was, is back, back in the I've heard that yeah. as well. Yeah. Well, I think that was the thought, is that they were going to see her... Um, from the quarterfinals. I mean, to be fair, pitching. Pinilla Harder is back in the squad as well, but I don't think she'll be playing either. So yeah. it could just be, a, you know, putting the frighteners up people. It's like, look, look at what we've brought. Yeah. We might not actually play them, but we could. She just turning like, up, she's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like putting her in the changing yeah. rooms. Boom. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm very much so looking forward to having that one on the box tonight. Yes. Um, just hopping into the comments, give us a like if you haven't already. Phil um, is a massive Spurs fan. He's got lots of love for Jenna as well. Yes, Proper yeah. Tottenham legend. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Jenna. <laughs> Voice, voice. Um, <laughs> Manchester United women I wonder who you support it says Rachel Daly v Russo uh, in the final of the FA Cup that would be so exciting wouldn't oh, it yeah. um, Amy Strang good morning to you she said I'm still a bit confused as to why Gio isn't involved in the UWCL team as it felt like she could have brought something in those last 10 to 15 minutes mm. for Arsenal do we agree with that yeah. she's got a lot to offer but she's she still got, she's still young she's she? got a lot to offer it's just one of the like we're not the manage we're not mm. management we're not Jonas like I, it's yeah, it's a good he, yeah he he had to make a decision unfortunately it's Gio it's just it I feel like we can't really it's his decision isn't it like mm. we can say all we want but ultimately he has the call mm. I feel like in a, in the first leg though you might not not that you'd be a risk but you might not be willing to take off a, a more experienced player to risk a youngster to do something when you've got a second leg. Do you know what I mean? If they were maybe 3-0 down in that in that first tie, perhaps you'd do that. You'd be like, right, we need to just go for it. So if they're in the same situation with the Emirates, maybe they would be willing to to take a risk and say, right, let's get her on. Let's see what she could do. We've got to try everything. Mm. Um, so yeah, we'll see how they get on, maybe in the second leg. Uh, also in the comments, uh, Rashik saying what a player Giuliano has become for, for Roma. Agree. Um, Jack saying as a Chelsea fan I would love Roma to win that game (laughs) (laughs) you would think all Chelsea fans will be hoping that Um, so yeah so many things um, to get into as we continue the show Um, Fan Van let's go there next because it's back for Women's Football Weekend it is what's on the agenda what's the route well we've had um, the Fan Van since last week Mm -hmm. Um, so we've been travelling around a couple of clubs uh, visiting some players, introducing the players to the van, and um, having a chat to some players. How um, did they receive the van? Are they a bit like, oh, you're going <laughs> to stick me in your van? Like, what happened? Well, listen, some of them got in the front seat. I did kind of worry because <laughs> you don't actually need a key to go. So there was, you know, I was worried some of them would just take off in it. But um, <laughs> no, we got a few players in the van as well. Uh, it's been good. She's been up and down the country already. We've she been, got a name. So, yeah, right. So Sorry. last time during the Euros, <laughs> we were wondering if we should have a name for it. And someone in the WhatsApp group suggested fanny the vanny and i'm just not a fan of that but it's kind of what's stuck Strong so name. on our <laughs> podcast yesterday chloe and i were like guys we need names we oh need i knew chloe so, would be yeah, involved in this i would like some names that maybe relate to like players can we get like van into current players names uh, van der sanden something yes! like that i was gonna say that. yes <laughs> like, like the or something like one. van der vanden do you know what i mean like uh-huh, the kind of uh-huh. so yeah give us your uh-huh. suggestions because um it definitely needs a name i refuse to call it oh, fanny why? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's one of those Bodie Mac Boatface names, uh, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I can't get now the van thing out my head and players with van in their names. Um, Great. Um, oh gosh, Vivi Van not... Mi- Miedema. No. Oh. Stuff. Like, someone gave us some good ones in our comments, and I Vivi can't van remember. That's great. Of but Vivi I would van. love that. That's okay, really, yeah, that's cute. Vivi Van Miedema. Um So for women's football weekend, will you be? Yes. Will you so be we're going to be. Petrol? Um, Everton, uh, we're going to take it to Everton and hopefully in the fan zone, mm-hmm. which is exciting. So you actually get to go and see the van. Uh, and then we've got Old Trafford and then we're going to Villa Park. 
Amazing. All over the gas. Yeah. It. And you'll see it, by the way. Now we're talking about you it. You can't miss see it. it. Uh-huh. It's a big people carrier with now amen fan van over the side of it um so yeah you uh, anytime i saw it at the euros i was like oh my god <laughs> um very very exciting so um as you mentioned earlier on you've been out visiting players yes. up and down the country and we've got good content and stuff for them very good content of course um you did an interview with emily gelnick and freya gregory from aston villa here's a teaser of what you can expect <laughs> So we are here with Emily Gilnick and Freya Gregory ahead of Women's Football Weekend. First things first, how excited are you for Women's Football Weekend? Yeah, massively. I think you know there's such a buzz around women's football, probably more than ever before. So I think for us as players, like it's really exciting, like playing at big stadiums, having the crowds, having the fans there, um, and the emphasis is just on this Women's Football Weekend is going to be massive for us. It's become a really important part of the Barclays WSL calendar, having it annually every year and in the big stadium. As players, do you really feel that um, going into it and does it add an extra weight to the games? No, I think it adds like a good element of pressure, just seeing where the growth in the game has come. So no, I think it creates a good amount of uh, a pressure and momentum moving forward in women's football, so it's an exciting time. Villa Park just has a certain buzz around it, like it's a brilliant ground, like as a Villa fan, like it's a dream to play at, at, at Villa Park. The women's game is brilliant for creating really good atmospheres, um, so yeah, really looking forward to it. There's a young girl in there who's, who's had the same dreams as me, and she wants to work her way up to the top and be able to put on a Villa jersey at Villa Park one day. So hopefully we can create that special feeling for all the young girls in the crowd. I think Midlands kind of derby going on, like I think that just adds to it as well. Women's Football Weekend, there's so much going on. I think it'd be a really, really good occasion for everyone to come to. And we'd love you to be there. There you go, Rachel and Sophie from Girls in the Ball in the fan van going up and down the country and that's the kind of content you can look forward to as well. I look forward to watching that all in full. Emma Gelnick seems like a really lovely girl. Yeah, she's got fun as well. Mm. Um, you've done stuff with her as well. She's 10, 10, she got recommend she, working with yeah. her. Honestly, <laughs> class. I think it's a lot to do with her being Aussie. I just feel like Aussies are on point, but genuinely, like, yeah. 10, <laughs> 10 was recommend. Her and Freya, and her and Freya together. Yeah, they just bounce well. off. So yeah. if anyone ever gets the opportunity to work with her, jump at it, like, genuinely, <laughs> highly recommend. Bless her. Um, yeah, she seems to get a really, <laughs> really nice name about her as well. Yeah. Um, it makes everyone smile, which is all sweet. Uh, okay, let's preview the WSL games. As we mentioned, it's Women's Football Weekend. It all kicks off Friday night. Everton against Liverpool at Goodison Park. Uh, that's the exciting thing as well about Women's Football Weekend. I think it's three out of the six games will be taking place at main stadiums. Um, it should be all of them. Main stadiums. Main stadiums. Main stadiums, mm -hmm. main stadiums absolutely. Um, Everton, Liverpool should be an interesting one because Everton have been brilliant this mm. season, but something's not clicking last couple of last couple of weeks. Goals. Jenna, yeah, they've think? had a little dip, haven't they, mm. the last couple of weeks? But I think what a place to turn it around in front of their, mm -hmm. you know, on their home turf. Mm -hmm. um, Liverpool, I think, I mean, they're just going about their business, aren't they, really? But for me, I think, yeah, Everton up, up top have just struggled a little bit lately. Um, but no, I think considering the season they had last year, they've definitely turned it around. You know, yeah definitely progress this season the their manager as well seems to have them playing better um but as we mentioned something has changed over the last couple of weeks do you think they can get the win at Goodison Park over Liverpool bear in mind Jenna mentioned they're quietly going yeah. about their business aren't they what I would say I think Liverpool are going to come back for redemption considering they lost to Everton at Anfield you know wasn't it was yeah which was actually for me I was really surprised by that um no disrespect to Everton but just in terms of like home turf, yeah. home crowd, I mean like they're both in Liverpool, but like home yeah. crowd, stuff like that. Um, so I do think Liverpool will be up up for it to, to get some re redemption on, on away turf. But again, Everton, they won't even lose at home and they want to they wanna keep their record of, of winning, won't they? Mm. I think Liverpool has struggled to be consistent across 90 minutes. Um, so I think it's whether it kind of, if, if they come out like that again, can Everton capitalise on maybe while they're getting their stuff together? Because Liverpool have been playing some good football. It's just doing it across the full 90. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a tough one to call. On Saturday, um, we have Spurs against Arsenal. We touched on this earlier on. Um, Jenna, how will Spurs be prepa preparing for this one? I think a bonus for them is that obviously Arsenal have had Champions League this week, whereas Tottenham mm -hmm. have had a whole, a whole extra week on the training field off the back of the win against Leicester. So I think, you know, they'll have a good preparation. Hopefully 
kit grow and gives kit grow an extra an extra week some more minutes for her and i think beth england as well has just been gradually coming back from an injury so i think the squad will be in a good a good place come saturday obviously it's a, a london derby arsenal it's always a tricky tricky opponent for tottenham to come up against but i think given the confidence they should take from last week's victory I think it will be tight. I know there's going to be a good crowd there. They'll have the crowd behind them like they like they always do. But, yeah, it's going to be a tough game. I, I don't think there'll be too many expectations. This isn't a game where people expect them to go in and win. I think, you know, those games coming up against mm. Reading, Brighton, they're, they're going to be the real cup finals for them. It would be an incredible upset. Yeah. You know, if, if um, they were to defeat Arsenal. But also, we have to be honest, Arsenal have had a few moments this season especially in the league where teams have capitalized on their errors yeah mm -hmm. and i do wonder the fact that they lost last night yeah. you know how that will impact the game will they come out gunning for it or will they be frustrated and is that something spurs can capitalize on yeah and i think will they have one eye on the second leg obviously coming coming up shortly after they yeah. can't like the thing they could and I, I don't know whether this could happen but it could be that they have one eye on that and they're a little bit complacent yeah yeah, yeah. that's what we're hoping for I'm sure yeah. <laughs> do you think there'd be squad rotation for Arsenal probably yeah. it'd be good to capitalise on yeah. utilising players but like equally that. they have to win this game that's, that's the thing that's, like, that's why it's like for me will they yeah. is there that option but also need to win so not mm -hmm. saying that the players coming off the bench aren't strong enough because we know Arsenal's got fantastic players but it's that routine of set up knowing how they go mm -hmm. I think you on. have to look at the next game always the next yeah. game you can't yeah. plan yeah. for a game two weeks ahead You've so got to, you don't want to come off of any regrets and yeah so probably we'd probably see it strong in the first yeah, half and then depending how it's going mm. then maybe we'd see like yeah like rotation yeah. it's hard it's hard one. yeah it's so hard to hard i don't to envy managers them. juggling so many things <laughs> <laughs> not at all uh, manchester united uh, heading to old trafford to face west ham on women's football weekend as well that should be a good one that should be a good one. I feel we've seen so many great moments from West Ham this season. Agreed. But just so inconsistent, yeah. Nancy. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, like there are there are moments of of excellence. Like when they're on the ball, their their possession, moving the ball well, when they're getting up front, you can see they want to score. Um I think Mackenzie Arnold is a fantastic keeper. She has let a few goals in. But she's such a good keeper. Like there's times mm. where she really does save their backsides, mm. um, in between the sticks. Like I wouldn't want to be going up against a Michael Arnold. I mean, she's a lot taller than me, so that's that's one part <laughs> that's of risk point. anyway. Like you look at how she played against Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, unreal. Yeah, that's it. And then seven 0 to Chelsea. Yeah, it's like yeah. So yeah. I'd like to see because when West Ham are playing well, they play with confidence and they've got drips and drabs of stuff where they're trying to pull it together and they they look good so it's like even when they're up against Villa like I think Villa versus I know they're playing uh, Man United but I think Villa versus West Ham are some of the best games I watch genuinely I so that yeah it's been a good game it, yeah. you're seeing the class and it's like okay now you have to transfer that to up against like your Chelsea's your Arsenal's your Man United's at Old Trafford mm. Mm. I think it all depends on the first half because I think Man United don't really concede in the first half West Ham are inconsistent across 90 minutes. If they can get a goal in that first half, that could be... Game changing. Yeah. And like, so it, I feel like a lot of it's going to hang on that first half. If Man United come out and play like they normally do in the first half, it'll be very difficult for West Ham. But mm. we should, I, I mean, I, I still think United will, will edge it. Sunday is a whopper of a game in Women's Football Weekend <laughs> because it's Manchester City against Chelsea. Oh, like yeah. we mentioned as well, <laughs> Chelsea playing in the Champions League tonight. Manchester City might capitalise on that, yeah. Jenna. Yeah, and I think Ma Manchester City will be looking for a response from the weekend. Yeah. Really, just they'll be devastated to go out at that stage, and it's huge for Man City to keep 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 them um, intact with the the teams above them, and as well Chelsea that that they're, they're in a similar situation to Arsenal, aren't they? They they've, yeah. they've got to go for it because I mean it's so exciting that that title race at the minute yeah. it's anyone's no one can afford to drop any points and there's some really huge games coming up for all of them I mean Chelsea are to lose this game just looking at the league table um, they still have that game in hand um, but United and City are both on 35 points Chelsea are on 37 points if Arsenal win their game in hand they're yeah. on 35 points mm. could you imagine 
all three of them on 35 yeah. like, and, and, and the goal difference, difference is not a lot yeah. between Man United and Arsenal Man United 29 Arsenal 26 25 yeah, 25, yeah. Oh. Keeps it tasty, doesn't it? You love and it, don't you? they still got to play each other a few of them. Right oh, it's yeah. the same with the bottom yeah. half and the yeah. top half. Uh, there's a lot of so fixtures yeah, between yeah. each other. It's like... Oh, and times. obviously you've oh, got... <laughs> for that fixture, you've got two of the the top goal scorers in Bonnie Shaw and Sam Kerr. Yeah. Mm. So that's exciting because it yeah. adds, to the, adds to the race of the golden boot. Yeah. Bunny is an absolute goal machine. scoring machine, which we highlighted in an earlier episode. Yeah. Um, and Sam Kerr scores goals. So I'm excited to see that, to see how them two, in terms of playing against each other, are what they're going to be. Like, if one scores, does another say, yeah. right, you've got to go, it's my turn <laughs> yeah. to get one in the back of the net. Like, it's exciting. Seeing how Chelsea come out tonight as well, you know, mm. where, the, where will their heads be at the weekend? If they get a good win tonight, yeah. they'll be worried about Man City, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if it's a tough game, you know, Champions League is so important to Chelsea because it's the one thing they haven't yeah. gotten. Do they put all their eggs in that basket? Mm-hmm. Or are they like, no, the the league is in touching distance? Once again, I would not envy my <laughs> <laughs> um, Big game at the bottom as well because it's Reading against Brighton. Um, both teams crying out for a three points there. Do we see that going any particular way? Reading, by the way, we should mention on 10 points and Brighton on eight points. I don't know. Brighton were so good against Man City. Uh, yeah, they were was, so good. I'm edging towards Brighton. Mm, which I just think they got momentum. I don't think I, I would have said like five weeks or four weeks ago. Yeah. I I pegged Brighton to go down this season. So after seeing how they played the other day, it's really hard to call. But equally, Reading are solid. You know, they got a goal against Chelsea. They had another ruled off for offside, I think. So they're finding goals, which mm-hmm. is what they've kind of been lacking. So mm-hmm. uh, that's a hard one to call. I'd say get Poppy Patterson on corners for that. Yeah, yeah. Get to ping one in again. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? But again, Reading, like, you've got the, the likes of Rowie, who scores them absolutely From anywhere. Yeah. So get Poppy on the corners, get Rowie on the ball from outside <laughs> the box. You've got a great game going on. Because against Birmingham, they weren't brilliant. Like, Birmingham had more chances. They hit the waterwork, like, five, five times, times or something it? ridiculous yeah. like that. Brighton got their goals in a four-minute period. They got the goal from the corner and a penalty. Mm-hmm. So... You know, if they're going up, taking Man City to the 80-whatever, ninth minute, but then just about getting by Birmingham, it is quite a tricky one, too. Mm-hmm. Unpredictable, mm-hmm. isn't it? We will see. And uh, Aston Villa, who've been getting her flowers on this show, uh, will play at Villa Park against Leicester. Uh, Leicester, as we mentioned, struggled this season. Jenna, can they get the better of Aston Villa, do you think, this weekend? I think, given the form Villa are in, mm. they're absolutely flying. Obviously, it's a big pressured match for Leicester again. They need to pick up a point. I mean, it's a cup final for Leicester, isn't it? Um, but for me, I, I, can, I can't see Villa dropping points. Yeah. yeah. Villa, They're uh, just flying. Yeah, Leicester won't make it easy, though. But they drew no. with, yeah, they drew with Everton. They will mm. not make so. it easy for them. Um, we had Emil Heskey in the studio a couple of weeks ago um, speaking to 19 men. The full, of it, uh, full interview I've done with them, it's available on the 19 Men Talks and 19 Men YouTube channel. Um, he's the head of women's football development at, at Leicester um, Women, and here's a teaser of what you can expect. From where we've come, from when the, the, they, they bought the club to where we are now, is, is we've taken massive strides. Um, and the club's backed us. Uh, training facility, players, everything that is needed, they've, they've, give, they've given us. So it's been, been a phenomenal growth to where we are now. If you want to be professionals, that's what the professionals do. And you, you, if you go over to the men's side, that's, that's the first and foremost what they have. So th- it should be the same here. And I think the clubs have backed it that way. Um, we're, we're, we're very lucky that they've backed it that way. So we have a facility just for us. Mm. We have three pitches that are, that are very nice. <laughs> And we get to choose on which one we want to go on. And uh, we have a fantastic gym. So there's no uh, corners cut in. So at the end of the day, they, they can't point any fingers at anyone else. It's now down to the to us as coaches and players to go out there and perform. There you go. Head of Women's Football Development and England legend, Emil Heskey. Uh, with us on the show a couple of weeks ago, you can watch that full video now on the 90 Men YouTube channel. Give it a like, leave a comment if you're feeling absolutely lovely. Um, in that clip, they are talking about the, the job that they are doing at Leicester and now it being handed over to the players to get results. Yeah. It's a really difficult place to be, isn't it, Rachel? It is because you're looking at that like great investment where they've got these great facilities and kind of the tools they need to do their job. It's similar to Brighton, but it's also like are you are they spending enough kind of on the pitch on players? You know, it's a it's that balance between facilities and bringing in 
the, the right players to um, to really push them forward. So it's a, a difficult job, but it's great that we're seeing more clubs getting access to those facilities. And it does take time for players to benefit from that. Like it mm. doesn't just happen in a season. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a similar setup to what Tottenham have now. Um, obviously, the club's invested a lot of money. They've got a probably one of the best training facilities now in the league. It's amazing. It's incredible. <laughs> mm. Honestly, that it's it's unreal. Everything's there. They've got their own training pitch. Um, and a l obviously, they've started to invest now in players. We've seen it with Beth England. So for them to be in a similar situation to Leicester, mm -hmm. and well, what, three years, three, four years into our journey, mm -hmm. and then staring relegation in the face, it has such a knock-on effect with the rest of the club. And get going into that championship, I've played it myself, it's such a difficult league to get out of. Oh. You have to bounce back straight away. It's not necessarily guaranteed. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, f the invest. I think I agree with what you say. You've got to get that balance right because teams around you are, are improving every every season, every transfer window now. And I think you've sometimes got to plan ahead to the next transfer window and identify your targets, but you have to be willing to spend money now. And I think looking at a club like Tottenham, I, I feel they have to go big now if they stay. Well, they will stay in this league. Yes, They'll go big in the, um, in the summer transfer window because, you know, you can't splash out on a player like Beth England and not build your team around her. It's kind of like a go big or go down, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say go big or go home, but go big or go, go yeah, down. Yeah. But also, like, it's managing expectations because yeah. you don't just buy, bring in a really expensive player and then suddenly it's you're going to be challenging for the league. Like, no. it takes yeah. time. It's the same yeah. with the facilities. It mm. takes time to actually see that benefit. And the game is still fairly young and it's professionalism. So mm -hmm. it's that kind of. I think a lot of the time people think we've put a lot of money into a team in women's football, therefore we're going to be the best. And actually, that's not how yeah. it works. No. And it takes time even just to see an investment back. So it's patience. They are bottom of the table, Leicester. Uh, I hate to be a negative Nelly. And actually <laughs> talking to Emil that day, you can see how difficult it is. You know, he was very open. It's such a hard, you know, situation to be in. Um, and everybody's doing the absolute best that they can. Um, unfortunately, it's not looking good for Leicester at this point in time but do we think that they can get themselves out of that relegation spot? I think it's possible, yeah. Which we, wouldn't again, wouldn't have said a few weeks back. Um, but Willie Kirk has done a job there, and I think they're, they're nicking points here and there, and they're pulling more and more people into that battle, um, which puts more pressure on other teams. So what they're doing is they're kind of spreading out the pressure rather than it <laughs> all being on them, mm -hmm. which will help, I guess. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't write them off just yet. No, no, I agree. Yeah, I think before Christmas, I, I ripped them off before Christmas, but they've... <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, okay, I, 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 <laughs> I'm about to apologise because I think there's still a lot more twists and turns to go, given that they have to play each other. Yeah. I think that yeah. I can see them getting out of it. So that was me bringing, apologising. <laughs> I can see them getting out of it. I think for me, the Brighton or Reading could be in more danger. A little bit of trouble. Um, going back to the comments, morning to Jack. He says, I'm really hoping that Erin Cuthbert is fully fit for the game mm -hmm. tonight in the Champions League. Mm -hmm. If she isn't, that's such a huge miss. Do we have any update on that as to why? I think she had a hamstring, a tight hamstring it was before the game at the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think, I think with it being Champions League, I think a lot of them all travelled. So mm. um, I feel like they will, this, this is the ultimate for Chelsea, the Champions League. So I think they will do their absolute best to get everyone ready for it and maybe that was what they were looking at in that game you know with the Champions League and making sure she was fit for it I mean they brought mm. Pernilla Harding but yeah. Pernilla Harder for God's sake like <laughs> she's definitely not going to play but it's like they're bringing all their tools just in case <laughs> yeah yes. get on there for a minute you can do a <laughs> job <laughs> yeah uh, so women's football weekend this weekend of course get out support your team in whatever league uh, that may be and then keep going back every weekend moving forward you've got Everton Liverpool Spurs Arsenal Man United West Ham Man City Chelsea Reading v Brighton and Aston Villa against Leicester so it's all to come up for you this weekend now Nancy over to you behind the baller yeah talk to us about the series what's going on who you've been talking to so yeah it's with BWSL behind the baller presented by EA Sports essentially me it's in the game yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah have to do it have to do it so yeah going round to I'm one of the hosts which I'm absolutely loving going round to all the clubs in the BWSL essentially calling up a few ballers to play some 2v2 on FIFA 23 just want to say I'm quite proud of my performances so far but yeah how, ha how have they been 
not going to say I've won, I've won every game, it. but I've done all right. <laughs> uh, nah, so the, the aim of it is we're getting three different uh, players in from each club, 2v2. One of the lucky girls gets to go with me. Obviously, I won't say I'm amazing at FIFA. I'm definitely not, but <laughs> get to ask a few questions, get to know them a bit more. As it says in the name, behind the ball up, more than them just being footballers. Honestly, it is such a laugh. Like, the concentration to play FIFA, host, ask questions, like, make sure I'm conscious of, like, keeping up, like, the, the energy and getting everything in that needs to be in and asking questions equally while also trying to win mm-hmm. is... <laughs> oh, it's a it's lot. It's, uh, yeah, I don't want to say it, but <laughs> nah, honestly, it's it's so much fun. I'm I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, there's two out so far, so you've got the... Um, which one have you got? You've got Villa, which I did, which was a lot of fun. Emily Gilnick was on it. And you also have Man City, which was the first episode. So, yeah, um, I'd highly recommend you, you get watching. Where can we watch this? Where can we so, watch this? they are all on 90 Min's YouTube. And they're also on the FA Player. So, you've got two options, but go to 90 Min's and watch them, I'd say. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe there, like there, do everything you have to do there. That's Behind the Baller with Nancy. Uh, and some brilliant ballers as well. Um, that should be fun. Well done. Thank well you. done. That sounds like good fun as well. <laughs> um, okay, guys. Anything else? Anyone would like to table before we wrap up? This is your safe space. Let's speak now. It's forever hold safe. your peace. We are live. <laughs> <laughs> forever hold your peace for another two weeks until we're back. And the comments. Everyone's happy. Yeah, everyone's happy. Okay, girls, you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. Okay, send our love to Sophie. Um, fingers crossed for Chelsea, I think, tonight. We're yes. all hoping yeah. that Chelsea yeah. can do it. Let's hope in a, an English team make to the final yeah. of the Champions League. Women's football weekend this weekend. Enjoy it. Have the best time. Nancy, Jenna, and your debut. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day. We'll see you soon. And Rachel, thank you. <laughs> 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 Just like-